Hi everybody, welcome to this really special episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. My name is Ian Cunningham from Vector GB, and I'm really, really pleased today to be taking a, a bit of a break from presenting and I'm going to join you in watching this episode, What is Calibration? which is going to be guest presented by my colleague, Peter Newton. He's a specialist in measurement and calibration topics. So he's the, the perfect person to explain this to us. So let's, without any further ado, get into foundation episode number five. What is calibration? So in this episode, you should understand and know why we need to calibrate and how we do it in the context of automotive engineering. Before watching this video, you might find it useful to have viewed networks in vehicles. So calibration, what is it? Strictly speaking, the term calibration means the act of comparison of a measured value against a standard. So we might make 1 million screws, but our machine for making those screws will wear over time. So is the last screw the same length or have the same dimensions as the first screw? That would be our calibration, comparing those two. It does not include any subsequent adjustment. However, in the world of automotive development, calibration often also means adjustment. So we might talk about measurement and calibration. So that's looking at a value and then changing it. But we'll see that as we go along in this episode. So why do we need calibration when developing a car or a component? Vehicle development is very expensive. Uh, many car companies have brands, but with different, but very similar vehicles, uh, vehicle types. It might be SUVs, small and medium family cars, crossovers, sports cars, vans, Car manufacturers use platforms. So these are shared designs, engineering, production efforts, resulting in major components used over a number of models. So we don't have to develop them individually for each vehicle, we can share them across the platform. Developing unique components for every different vehicle would be prohibitively expensive. So we use platforms. So why do we need calibration? Well, we might have the same engine, but used in a number of different vehicles. We want these vehicles to have different characteristics. So how can the same engine be distinctive? The electronic control unit or ECU that controls the engine uses different parameters or values. So a sports car should be faster accelerating than a van but a van should carry a heavier load than a sports car. They might use the same engine type, but the values used by the ECU are different. Power assisted steering is another example. Traveling at 70 miles an hour requires very little assistance. Parking requires more assistance. If you have an SUV, that requires more assistance than a two seater town car because it weighs more. We might want to use the same ECU, but the values used to control the steering at varying speeds are different. Therefore, calibration refers to measuring and changing internal values in the ECU to better suit the needs of the vehicle. So how can we calibrate and adjust values? So in a vehicle, there are many ECUs developed by different companies. So we want a common method for measurement and adjustment or measurement and calibration. We need some other components as well. So we need some measurement and calibration software. We need a vehicle network to connect to the ECU. We need an interface from our software to the ECU. We need a calibration protocol that defines how we do it. And then we need an ECU description file. And we'll explain these as the episode goes on. 
So here's an example of a network. Uh, we've got three ECUs controlling the braking, ABS, the gearbox, and the engine management. And each of these ECUs has many parameters, many signals. Some of them, but not all, are transmitted onto the network for the others to use. Maybe every 100 milliseconds, every 500, every 50, every 250. So our signals are being sent out, but not all of the signals are sent out. In our engine management control unit here, we might have 10,000 signals, but not all of them will be sent on to the network for the other ECUs to use. So how do we access these hidden components? Well, this is the task of measurement and calibration. So how does it work? We have two main protocols that we use, CCP, short for CAN Calibration Protocol, and then we have XCP, which is a universal or extended calibration protocol. And these will define how we talk to our ECU and get data back. So the parts that we need, we need a measurement and calibration system, we need an ECU, and then we need this communication or calibration protocol. So CCP, XCP needs to be both in our software on our laptop or computer, and it needs to be in the ECU as well. We then need an ECU description file called an A2L file. And this tells us where our variable is, what it's called, and how we interpret it, engineering units, volts degrees, etc. So we have a calibration tool, our interface hardware. We have an A2L description file that we use. We then use the vehicle network to talk to our ECU. That message is sent to our network software and to the CCP software. And that software will point to an address that's been sent to it. It will get the data from that address and then send it back to the calibration tool. And we might use a timer within the ECU to control the repeated transmission of that data back to the calibration tool. So we can measure what's in memory of the ECU and then we use a very similar process to actually send a message to change a value in an address and then we can carry on measuring to see what the effect is. So we've got a display here of a signal called channel one that is a sine wave and we're measuring this sine wave here and amplitude or ample is another value in our ECU that controls the size, the amplitude of this waveform. So at the start of our test, it was on six. And as we can see here, this point here was 5.93, 5.963. Then we said, oh, we need to change that. We need to make that value bigger. So we then changed the value of amplitude in the ECU to 12. And we can see here the change of the signal. So 11.991 at this sample point. And then again, we said, oh, we need to change that value a little bit more to improve it. We've changed it to 24. And then that affects the amplitude of channel one that we're also measuring. So 23.999 at this sample point. And we can use a window here within our software tool to change the value. Our software tool then writes that to the ECU and we see the change. What we did, did we just tell you about? We talked about calibration is in the automotive world, measurement and adjustment of values to improve performance and to allow us to have common systems in different vehicles. We've seen there's a special type of communication used for measurement and calibration, CCP and XCP, and we need special software in the ECU and in our computer. And here's a screenshot of different window types showing different data from our ECU and vehicle in a tool called Canopy. If you want to know more about this topic, then Vector provides a free book you can also download a version. We've got free e-learning on XCP and CCP. 
and we have many free webinars. Vector's website also contains a lot of information. We have tools for creating and re the required files, tools for calibration and measurement, and ECU software for CCP and XCP communication. So watch out for future episodes. Uh, there is one on reprogramming ECUs. So once you've done your measurement and calibration, you can make a permanent change in the ECU. Wow, thanks for that piece. That was really fantastic. And thank you for, for being our guest presenter today. Of course, as always, if you have any questions on the content of this episode or ideas for further episodes based on what you've seen today or anything in any episode of Engineering the Jigsaw, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Please use our special contact email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again for another episode soon.